Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is page two. We'll see how far we get. I don't know if I can get through all of page two, but we'll see what we can do, okay? Um, your club wants to raise $125 at a car wash. You charge $5 for a wash and $8 for a wash and wax. What equation models this equation? Um, write the equation. What equation models the situation? Sorry. Write this equation in the line in standard form. All right, standard form is in the form of AX plus BY equals C. Okay. Oops. Oh. Um, I didn't realize that wasn't there. <laughs> so I'll just do 19 first while I just heard that one. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and call X the number of car washes. And I call Y the number of wash slash wax. So I know it's $5 for a wash, so 5X plus 8Y, $8 for a wash and wax, and that equals $125. There we go. Um, again, it's multiple choice tests. You can kind of, you know, A, B, C, or D. But if you were doing this on, say, an open-ended question for like the SAT, make sure you label everything too over here to the right. Okay, back to 18, my bad. What's the equation of a line that passes through the points negative 2, negative 5, and 6, 3? Write the equation line slope-intercept form. All right, you need to find your slope first. So here's x1, y1, x2, y2. And if I plug everything in here, I get 3 minus negative 5 divided by 6 minus negative 2. Up top I get 8. Down low I get 8. Okay, 8 over 8 is 1. So, that's my slope. Now if I come back over here, y equals mx plus b, I now have my m, but I need my x and y. You can pick whatever you want. I'm going to go with this one just because, why not? So 3 equals 1 times 6 plus b. Uh, 1 times 6 is 6. If I subtract that over, b equals negative 3. So now I have my m and I have my b. I can put everything back in. 1x minus 3. There we go. Okay. If all else fails, it's multiple choice test, and you get a question like this, you can go ahead and just do the plug and chug method where you take all your answers, plug these points into it, make sure it works one way to beat the test. <clears throat> Number 20, the variables x and y vary directly. Your various directly equation is y equals kx. Um, so they're giving you an x and y, they want you to solve for k, and then it says what's the equation that relates to x and y. Once you solve the k, you just make that equation up. So plugging things in, 20 goes in for y, k is, I don't know, and x is one-fifth. Well, how do I get rid of a fraction? Well, you do the reciprocal, you multiply by reciprocal. So multiplying both sides by 5, um, so k equals 100. Now that I have my um, constant of variation, I can go ahead and do y equals 100x. Got it. I right, so there's your equation. All right, number 21, solve for x. So I want to get x by itself. I can subtract 5 over. Negative 2x is less than 18. And then if I divide by negative 2, please don't forget for inequality, when you divide by a negative, your inequality flips. X is greater than negative 9. Okay? If you were asked to have a, gra a graph for that one, it's at negative 9, open circle, everything to the right. Um, it's open circles for greater than less than. It's closed circles for greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Sweet. Absolute value. Every absolute value graph, you need to have two equations, or in this case, two inequalities. My first one is you just rewrite it the way it is. 2x minus 1 is greater than 19. The second one is 2x minus 1 again. This changes to negative 19, and this symbol flips. So if it was greater, it becomes less than, or vice versa. And then you just solve each one. Um, add 1 over, divide x is greater than 10. Over here, add 1 over, divide. Okay, so this would be an or compound inequality because I'm less than negative 9 or I'm greater than 10. So they split in both directions. The only other type is the and problem um, and that's when they meet in the middle. And for inequalities, if it's greater than it's or, less than it's and. However you want to remember that. Write the inequality shown. This is an example of the and one. Okay, um, starting at negative 3, open circle, so less than x, 
which is less than 1. See how x is contained between these two boundaries? Um, so if I'm writing that out in inequality, it's just your first starting point, your second starting point, and you're done. Okay? All right. Graph inequality, y is greater than 2x minus 1. Um, so what we got here is we can graph it. So my y-intercept is negative 1, down 1, plot a point. Okay? And again, this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. That's why this is your y-intercept. This is your slope. Uh, my slope is 2, so I'm going up 2 over 1. Now it's greater than. So because inequality, this is a dashed line. Okay. And you could do a test point. So I see that 0, 0 is off the line. I'm going to test 0, 0. Plug a 0 in for y. Plug a 0 in for 1. Uh, sorry, x. Is 0 greater than negative 1? Yep. So here's 0, 0. I'm going to shade on this side. And it works out fine. If it would have failed, meaning that like it wasn't true, I would shade the opposite side. Okay. <clears throat> 25, solve. Absolute value 3x plus 7 equals 19. Again, absolute value means two of them. So because it's an equ equation instead of inequality, it's a little simpler. 3x plus 7 equals 19. 3x plus 7 equals negative 19. Okay. If I subtract 9 over, sorry, I subtract 7 over, um, 3x equals 12, x equals 4. That's one of your answers. If I subtract 7 over here, I get 3x equals negative 26. Divide x equals negative 26 over 3. Um, and yes, you can get some fractions like that. Keeping in mind, again, it's, an abs it's a multiple choice test. Check out your answers. If it's in decimal form, then just do negative 26 divided by 3 and get negative 8.66. If it leaves as a fraction, you get the idea. Um, but you will get two answers for absolute value. If you could take the time to plug this back in, if you plug 4 in, you'll get positive 19. If you plug in negative 26 over 3, you'll get negative 19. Okay? And then under the absolute value, they both turn positive. So it works out. Cool. Okay. Graphing absolute value y equals a absolute value x minus h plus k. The h, k is your vertex. Okay. I would definitely remember that because that's going to be a common theme coming up real soon. Um, so I need to find out what my vertex is, so I can plot that, and then absolute value graphs are always V-shaped, because again, it can't be negative. So if you look at the first example, you see how I have nothing beside the X under the absolute value? So my H value for my HK is zero. Do I have anything out here? Nope, zero, okay? Um, so if I'm gonna graph this, zero, zero is right here. My slope is 2, that's what's out front. I'm going up 2 over 1 from here. And then because this is a line of symmetry, you can flip this across, or you can go up 2 left 1, however you want to think about it. There's your V. Okay. Um, I'm showing you how to do this by hand, mostly because this is your open-ended part of your um, midterm, which is next Wednesday in class. Okay. So just be aware of that. I'm going to give you two of these, so you know how to do two of them. Uh, over here, the tricky part is it's always the opposite value for your x. So instead of negative 1, it's positive 1. On the outside, it's positive 2. All right, that was that thing we learned in class numerous times. So 1, 2 is 1, 2 right there. There's my vertex. You can label everything. It's good. You get partial credit. Slope is 2. From here, you go up 2 over 1, up 2 left 1. There you go. If this was negative out front, that just means instead of going up 2 over 1, you'd be down 2 over 1, and then your graph would be opening down, which makes sense because a negative leading coefficient flips your graph over the x-axis. Cool. 28. In the function y equals blah, 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 write the vertex in AOS. This is a throwback problem. It's just x equals negative b divided by 2a. All right. Um, now, just a little, like, trick for you guys. Um... This is easy. You plug in the values here, you get uh, positive 8 because negative negative makes it positive. Divided by 2 times negative 2. 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. So my AOS is x equals negative 2. And then what you can do is you can take negative 2 and plug it back into your original function. Okay. 
negative 1. So your vertex is negative 2, negative 1. Now, you guys have your Desmos calculator that you're allowed to use, okay? Um, you could graph this, and like I said, you can click on the graph and see where that point is. The vertex is always the highest or lowest point, so it's a simple, quick, easy way to do it. All right, so feel free to do that as well. Um, if that helps you knock yourself out, you have it, use it. Okay, I mean it's. I mean, don't don't not use your technology that you have available to you. Okay, what's the vertex to graph the function? Da 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 da. This is in vertex form already, which looks strangely familiar to what we had above. I mean, look, it's almost exactly the same. The only difference was this is absolute value brackets. This is parentheses squared. So it's always opposite, same. So the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Same on the outside is 7. Simple as can be. Um, 30, what are the x-intercepts of this? The intercepts are your solutions or your zeros. So it's where these equal 0. Add 6 over. Subtract 3 over. So the two points are 6, 0 and negative 3 comma 0 because it's your x intercepts if they were your y intercepts it would be 0 comma the number 0 comma the number um, so pretty simple stuff just be careful because I can promise you one of the answers on the test will be negative 6 comma 0 and negative 3 comma sorry negative 6 comma 0 and 3 comma 0 make sure you're setting equal 0 and solving so we don't fall for that trap um Let's see if we can bust out 31A and B, and then we'll call it this video. 31A, x squared plus 5x minus 14. It's a factoring problem. Okay. The only way to do this is to do it. So negative 14 goes up top. 5 down goes down low. What numbers multiply give you negative 14 but after 5? <clears throat> so we're looking at 7 and negative 2. Because my leading coefficient is 1, this is a simple factoring problem. Plus 7, minus 2 done that okay this one is tougher because you have a leading coefficient of three now you can look for a GCF but between 3 4 and 15 the only GCF I have is one so it doesn't help me out much three times negative 15 is negative 45 um, and I want positive 4 down low what numbers multiplying be 45 after 4 positive 9 negative 5 when I draw this up because it's 3x squared I need a 3x and an x can 3 go into 9 or can 3 go into negative 5? We can go into 9. So what times 3 gives you 9? Positive 3. What times 1 gives you negative 5? Negative 5. That's all she wrote. If you get stuck on these problems on the test, if they ask you something like this, you can always backpedal, meaning look at your answers and foil them out and see which one equals the question they're asking you. It's a way to kind of cheat the problem. But in a multiple choice test, that's just called being smart. So feel free to use that. All right. This is your second video. I will make up the rest of them probably later today or over the weekend. But keep breaking up your studying, okay? Take your time studying. And you guys will rock out in this test. Okay? So as always, keep up the good work and good luck. We are all counting on you.